Okay, so today we are here. Good afternoon, everybody. We are here to have our session on Physio TV by none other than our beloved alumni, Dr. Rahul Shah. Dr. Rahul is going to talk about roadmap to becoming a licensed physical therapist in the United States, which is something which is very, very important. And all our students are eagerly waiting for this talk for today. And just to tell you in short that Rahul, Dr. Rahul is PTDPT. He's APTA credentialized clinical instructor. He's a tutor for NPT Final Frontier. And Dr. Rahul is also a uh, a CU instructor and guest lecturer at the university. So, so we welcome Dr. Rahul and we welcome Professor Oakley for our uh, session on Physio TV. So over to you, Rahul. Thank you so much, Dr. Saroshri. It is indeed a more than a pleasure to be able to come back and you know kind of help and serve uh, my alma mater at first where I started my journey. So I think it's, it's a great opportunity and I want to thank Sancheti institute you and the whole staff for this. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Dr. Suroshri, can you see yes, my screen is visible. Okay, perfect. Um, so today we are going to be talking about uh, what is a roadmap to becoming a licensed physical therapy in the United States. Uh, and before that, um, obviously, Dr. Saroshri introduced, but I would want to emphasize on certain things that uh, I come from a very same background and at this point, the same college or university as yours. I graduated with my BPTH degree from our esteemed Sancheti Institute College of Physical Therapy uh, in 2016. I did work in Pune for two more years and then I moved to the United States in 2018, where I graduated with a DPT, that is a doctorate of physical therapy degree from Andrews University, which is in Michigan. Um, I graduated in the year of 2021. At this time, I'm an APTA credentialed clinical instructor. So it's like a additional, you know, certification where you can uh, have students in your clinic, uh, physical therapy students, so that you can train them. I also serve as the vice chair of APTA Indiana State Central District. APTA is American Physical Therapy Association. It's the main association for the physical therapy profession in the United States. I also serve as a tutor for NPT Final Frontier. It's a NPT board prep exam. NPT is the National Physical Therapy Examination. So in the United States, uh, unlike India, it's a little different how the process works. I'm going to be talking in detail uh, about it. So NPT is basically the licensing exam that you require to be able to practice as a in a clinic or in a hospital over here. Um, I'm a CU instructor and I do guest lectures at different universities. So. If you have any questions, which I know Dr. Suroshri said that there are already questions, which I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, so I come from a very similar background. So I can tell you the steps that would possibly be the best to help you. So at this point, I know that we are looking at students or, you know, even some clinicians. So first thing is you have to ask yourself, where do you see yourself in the next five years? And this is not like a typical HR interview question, but it is about asking yourself of what exactly you want to do because it is a process and the process does take time. So you have to consider what you want to do in the future. And if the thing comes that, you know, maybe I want to move to the United States and work there as a physical therapist. So what are the different routes for you to get here? So I'm going to be discussing a lot of them that are all possible ones, but I'll also tell you which ones are the easiest or the most convenient ones. So the first one is going to be a visitor visa, which allows you to only visit when you have an uh, B1, B2 visa. So the visa type is called B1, B2, where you can come visit, 
you can possibly give the exam a lot of uh, our students do give exams on visitor visas but it doesn't allow you to work at all so this is only to get the license but it won't allow you to work the route that i came in through which i think is one of the best routes uh, that i always recommend anyone and that is going to be the f1 student visa so what happens in an f1 student visa is you get admission to a university in a physical therapy program so as a student you cannot work unless your cpt is approved so what is cpt cpt is curriculum practicum training so when you are in a program and your program like we have our internships or clinical rotations right so if the program says that okay you know it is something that you can do that's when you know you can work in a clinic and it's not going to be like an unpaid internship you can get paid or it could be a voluntary service either or uh on an f1 visa you require an i20 that is the admission letter before you apply for an f1 visa so it's not that you can decide i want to go on an f1 visa you need to get an admit into a university before you uh apply for that visa the next one is h1b visa so this is also a great route if you are a clinician and you do not plan to study but it is a very tedious process because h1 visa is like a lottery visa which happens once a year and for that you require a type 1 review so right now you may find a lot of uh terms which you may not understand but i'm going to make sure that i have explained all of this before we end so type 1 review is like a credential review that requires you to be able to even be eligible to get into the lottery for h1 and you need to find an employer who is willing to sponsor you so you need someone similar to the student visa where a university sponsors you or you get admitted to a university in h1 visa you need an employer who is going to be sponsoring you so those two are the places where you know most people would opt to come student is still my favorite some of you all uh, in the recent times you know if you're spou if you're married to someone who's already in the united states and you come here on an h4 dependent visa so h4 dependent visa is that your spouse is on an h1 visa <clears throat> so they could be in the field of physical therapy or not in the field of physical therapy so you come here on a dependent visa so you have uh, you can stay here you can study but you cannot work to work on an h4 visa the immigration laws keep changing you you have to have a you know your spouse who's already filed for a green card or has a green card approved and then you have to apply for a ead that is employment authorization document on an h4 or a green card you can apply for an ead and once you have an ead that's when you can work on an h4 green card is something that is almost like a citizenship i think the only right that you don't have is you cannot vote but you do not require a sponsorship you can travel in and out of the country you can work for someone you can open your own physical therapy setup either or is all good but that's only if you have it okay so now like i said f1 visa so f1 visa is like a student visa you get enrolled into a physical therapy program uh, there are certain programs uh, which i would list out uh, we do have a representative who is the professor at andrews university who will talk to you all towards the end that's dr elizabeth oakley uh, so andrews university would my personal recommendation be the best because i myself have experienced it i do know my friends and colleagues who've come through different universities but obviously my recommendation would be on my own experience which has been excellent for andrews university andrews university is located in michigan uh they have a tdpt program which basically is like they they consider your indian bachelor's degree 
for india when we have a bpth it's a doctor degree you can put a doctor before your name and you can work as a physical therapist so andrews university will accept that as a degree but according to the criteria you still have to complete the dpt so it basically is like a bridge program between your indian degree and the dpt that's why it's called as a transitional degree uh loma linda university is in loma linda the place itself is called as loma linda and that's in california even they have a ppdpt which is post professional dpt which is very similar to the tdpt uh tura university offers a transitional dpt too but the criteria is that you need to be licensed in the country whereas for uh, andrews and loma linda you do not require a license for tura you require to be licensed before you get an admit so that's kind of a very big that's kind of a very big obligation unless you don't have a license it's pretty difficult whereas when i came to andrews university i did not have the license while i was studying in the program i could prepare for the exam i and i got the license as a student itself uh there are certain other universities like dbu that stalis baptist university and liu brooklyn which is kind of uh has a lot of indian students who come in but they offer ms program ms is masters of science and then you can choose exercise physiology or kinesiology as your concentration my recommendation would still be is go for a doctorate degree because that is a terminal degree uh and according to the changing laws sooner or later they will make dpt as a compulsory requirement for all foreign trained professionals okay um dr suresh are you going fine yes yes okay perfect so now when you are in india what are the things you can do while you are preparing to you know move to the united states what are the things that you can focus on one is your evaluation process so the evaluation process is in united states you require that your degree is verified they look at the syllabus from the university uh and that is called as the evaluation process which does not require you to be in the united states so you can start that uh, when you are in india and because it takes a few months like about usually i'd say about 6 months for the whole process to get done you can also prepare and give your toefl exam and the last thing that you can start doing while you are in india is start coaching classes for npt preparation so i will once i talk about the npt preparation i'll discuss more on what classes you could opt for and what should be your idea behind it so the first step like we were discussing now i'll break down all these three steps of how you need to be doing so with the evaluation process the first thing you have to do is look at a state right if you are coming to michigan you could opt for michigan as a state or you could opt as any of the 49 states united states has 50 but any of the 49 states you could opt and then you will go through the you'll go through this route that's mentioned below or then you can opt for new york when i came here most foreign trained you would see or if you talk to any of your friends who are here you would see that new york is one of the easiest states to get your education credential evaluated which means that on a bachelor's degree on in india there is a very very high likely chance and if you are from sancheti or you belong to mhs i would say 99.9% you won't have any problems getting an evaluation done and you become immediately eligible to give the exam so you apply for a new york state and you do a new york state credential verification where you send your syllabus your mark sheets uh, all your other internship completion documents all of those to fccpt fccpt is foreign credentialing commission on physical therapy there are other uh institutions that also do credentialing but fccpt is the most widely accepted so i would definitely recommend is not to get stuck in the process and just opt for fccpt 
So once you send them the documents to for New York credential, they'll authorize that all the documents are valid and legal. They've not been forged. And then they will send it to New York State uh, Education Board. So that's NYSED. So then you have to contact NYSED and say, okay, my documents have been sent. And then they will run the evaluation whether you are equivalent and then you are eligible to apply for the NPD. So in this route, you can see that the evaluation for the credits is done by NYSED, which is a complete separate entity. And that's why their evaluation process is not so stringent. It's easier to get a uh, eligibility. Whereas if you decide to go for any other 49 states, you're going to have two options. <clears throat> One is an educational credential review. Like for the state of Michigan, you would require an educational credential review in which if you have graduated after the year of 2016, your date of graduation is after 2016, you would require 170 credit hours. And with a typical bachelor's degree from India, be it Sancheti or any of the universities, you would typically get 150 credit hours, which means if you immediately come from India and apply for an ECR, you would not be equivalent or eligible. So then you would have to do, you know, wait for about one or two semesters to finish the credits. You could also do some other courses prior hand to get the credits. Up and then be eligible and apply for 170 credits. You can apply at 150, but you're for sure going to get a rejection. So, and the process and the cost of this evaluation is also high. So I would not recommend doing that. Now, some states, like I said, Michigan will allow you to work on an ECR or give the exam on ECR. Some states require you to do a type one review. They are compulsory type 1 states and a type 1 review is 210 credits, which is your bachelor's, your transitional DPT and about 30 additional credits. So that's a lot of evaluation that is required for certain states. There are about six states like the state of Massachusetts, where Boston is, California, um, New Mexico. So there are different states that require this as their basic eligible criteria, criteria for being able to apply for the exam. Um, that's why I always recommend as you come into the country, it's better to just start with a New York evaluation because the NPT is supposed to be passed only once. If you pass the licensing exam for New York and later on you decide to move to any other state like California, Michigan, or Chicago, that's Illinois, you will just have to transfer your score. You do not have to give the exam again. So, and as foreign trained, it does take us time to get, you know, acclimatized to the exam pattern. And so it's better to start off with a New York process and then, you know, be able to eligible to move things around. When I came here, I required only 150 credits. So I could have been eligible for ECR, but then they do have certain things where you may get deficiencies. One of the deficiency which I got was on delegation. So in the United States, there are multiple professions in physical therapy. One is a physical therapist. The other is a physical therapist assistant. Both these professions are licensed. In India, since we do not have a physical therapist assistant, it doesn't get covered in your syllabus. So when I came here and I did ECR, I had the number of credits, but what I was missing was delegation as a course. So then I had to do an additional course, which fulfilled the criteria, and then I can have an eligibility covered. At this point, I have a type one review completed, which is also something that you require for an H1 visa. Okay, so once you do either of those reviews, the state board will uh, be just saying, okay, because in this process, the maximum work is done by FCCPT. The state board just checks 
your background check if you have a criminal record that stops you from taking the exam or uh, if you've taken the state you know some states require you to do a jurisprudence exam like a state law exam to be become eligible for the NPT so all of that is done and then you will become eligible for the NPT So New York credential, like I said, a foreign educated PT seeking a license to practice in the state of New York should apply for New York credentials. This does not include a healthcare worker certificate. A healthcare worker certificate is a type one evaluation. ECR, like I was suggesting, is who should apply for an uh, ECR or an educational credential review? All the states except for New York. If you are planning to reside in any one of the jurisdictions uh, that and you decide to seek a license or eligibility to give the exam, you will have to apply for an ECR. Now, who should not apply for an ECR is if you need a visa screening or a healthcare worker certificate. If you decide to come to the country on a H-1B visa straight away, you're like, I don't want to study i directly want to work here i'm going to go on a tourist visa get my license and then just apply to work there in that case you would straight away require a uh, type one and not an ecr if you're applying for a jurisdiction that requires type one or if you're applying for a state that doesn't require ecr like new york state new york would require their own nycd evaluation Now, type one review, as we've already been discussing in parts, who should apply for a type one? If you're qualified foreign born physical therapist, when you say qualified, that means licensed, seeking to immigrate or, or obtain licensure to practice in the as a PT in the United States. If you need a healthcare worker certificate for immigration, that is for your H1 visa. Or if you are in one of the states that requires you to have a type 1 event to practice, like Massachusetts, California, there are a few others that you can find on the FCCPT website. So that is with your evaluation process. The other thing that you can prepare while you are in India is your English proficiency exam. That's your TOEFL. So all foreign trained PTs are required to submit their TOEFL scores, except you are from a country, uh, you're graduated from a country whose primary language is English. So if you apply for any of the universities, I think most universities require a TOEFL, uh, but at Andrews University, they accepted Indian education as English, which of course is, uh, some universities would still require you to go for a TOEFL process because that's just their general criteria. When I was at Andrews University, I worked at the graduate enrollment office. So we would look at international admissions and they were very friendly. They were very, uh, you know, open to learning. So they, you know, always would ask us, what is your language of education? How does things go? So, you know, with that, we kind of developed a system where you do not require any um, VES evaluation. A VES evaluation is basically, you know, before a university accepts you, they require you to do another evaluation. So Andrews University does not require a VES or a TOEFL because they accept Indian, Indian degrees as English, but the other universities might require you to have a TOEFL exam. Some states also require you to have TOEFL uh, for the licensing exam for that's before you are able to apply for the NPT. So some state board is some state boards are ready to waive your TOEFL if you have a master's or a transitional DPT degree in the United States. So I out of all the process, I think TOEFL is one of the least tedious because uh, of our education system in India, I'm pretty sure most or everybody would be able to clear TOEFL pretty easily. So that's something that you can, you know, get rid of as before, before, you know, you move to the US. TOEFL scores are valid for two years. So don't do it way too much in advance as well. 
uh, you can do it right before you're about to leave or a few months before you leave. Now coming to preparing for the NPTA program. Uh, I may have a very biased opinion on this because I do teach for them, but I would very proudly also say that we can confidently say that we are ranked number one uh, on even on the American Physical Therapy Association website as preparation for the NPT. So NPT Final Frontier was started by Dr. Bhupinder Singh. He is also an Indian uh, from Amritsar. He did his bachelor's there. He did his PhD in the United States. And right now he's a program director at a university. So he worked at California State University and now he's a program director at a physical therapy program. Um, what does Final Frontier offer you? There are various coaching classes uh, for NPT preparation, but like I said, Final Frontier helped me. And I think that's what I would recommend everyone, which is the best choice. What does, uh, which part of the program did I choose? I chose the full life class. So there are different options. One is a full life class where you have subscription for one year. Uh, which is, so every cohort, the exam happens four times a year. That is January, April, your July and October exams. So you have exam happening four times. So the whole course is repeated every three months. But once you sign up, you have an access for a year. So you could do multiple courses or multiple cohorts to get more used to it. Uh, every cohort is 11 week online coaching program. So you can do that from India. You can do that from wherever in the world. It's online through Zoom. Uh, they also offer small group tutorings. Usually the live classes are big groups, almost a size, I would say about 350 to 400 uh, for every class. But then if you want, there are additional small group tutoring options and even one-on-one -on -one coaching options available. Uh, if you feel that it doesn't match your schedule all the time, all the classes are recorded and there are self-study options as well. So in that case, it basically kind of has been designed or ev evolved over a period of time to be such that it can cater to anyone and everyone based on their needs. Um, so you can basically at this point, just to even have a look, you can join the free NPT Final Frontier uh, Facebook and Instagram page. That is the website for it. So you'll kind of start getting an idea on how things work. I did not know about this program when I was in India. When I came here, uh, my seniors or my peers at Andrews University told me about this and I did take their coaching and that's how I got, you know, acquainted with them. I passed with them with a very good score and that's when they, you know, offered me to volunteer because I always had a knack for teaching. So about NPT, what is there? is one is you need to be clear for the prerequisites. The exam is a 250 question multiple choice exam. So there are no essay answers. So that is something that is very different from the Indian education system that you will come across is in India, you have some exam, right? You have like a 15 pointer question. You'll write two or three pages. You may get five, seven, 10, 12, 14. 15 over here it's 250 question questions and everything has four options so the probability is 25 percent that you'll get it right which basically means that it's an all or none law if you get the correct one you get full points or you don't get it so 250 questions in five hours so that means for every question you have only about just over a minute the passing score is a 75%. So it is something that is a pretty standardized and it does, does require a lot of efforts. Uh, the lifetime maximum for being able to apply for the NPT is you can maximally take it only six times. 
uh that's not to intimidate or anything i my hope is that you'll clear it in the first attempt uh but it's it's a pretty tough exam and that's the reason that we recommend uh doing the exam or preparing for it beforehand my personal experience is i did not know any of this information while I, while i was in india when i came here i started doing the coaching i did not pass the exam myself on the first attempt uh because the exam pattern was different there was a lot of new content which is not covered uh in our education system which probably might not be something i'm of a very strong opinion that i've passed the exam 3 years back and i still don't see any of that in the clinic but as a part of the exam it is there so you will have to study you have no way getting out of it and being a very high 75% passing you can't skip anything you have to know everything so i passed my exam on the second attempt the cost of that exam is 485 dollars and then you will have to pay the exam center fees which is approximately 100 dollars so it takes you about 585 or with taxes 587 dollars to take an attempt and when you pass the licensing exam this is what will appear on your dashboard this is the past screen uh now talking about some important figures with evaluation uh the question does come okay all of this process is fine how much am i going to pay for it so the type 1 review is going to cost 1340 dollars that is valid since 2020 um an ecr evaluation takes 1240 dollars so the cost of is definitely higher now if you do an evaluation and you don't get through you want to reevaluate it may take about 800 dollars again so even when you have to do it again it's not like a one time fee that one time i paid i didn't clear and i did not get it equivalent and then i have to do it again so you will have to pay the fees again that's why i said that unless you know that you are not eligible it's no point spending so much money uh just to try out things there are different things uh plan is something that they offer where they do not do an evaluation they look at your uh education credentials and then they will suggest you what needs to be done which is cost at 1440 which i think is way overpriced there is an alternative which is probably more effective so i'll discuss about that as well okay now moving forward you came to the united states you got your license and now you're looking for a job so what are the job options for physical therapists what are the different facilities that you can work at you can work at an hospital care which is like an acute care you can work at an outpatient or what we call it in india is an opd outpatient department you could work in sports and wellness centers uh the home health or home care is what we call it home health care is an option hospice care is more like an holistic care nursing homes um so the thing that we that it's different is once you get a surgery you are in an acute care facility like a hospital but to avoid long term hospitalization and the risks associated associated with it some population is sent to a nursing home or a skilled nursing facility now the skilled nursing facility is a place where patients stay in for longer who require physical therapy who require rehabilitation and they cannot go home uh you can work in educational settings such as preschools or vocational schools uh usually as a foreign trained or once you come in your job opportunities are going to be maximum for outpatient clinics and home care uh for hospital it's not the easiest to get but if you get it grab it it's a great opportunity question is the salary <laughs> right you got the job now come to the main part how much am i going to make how much is going to be the salary uh 
So the salary will differ across the country. Some states have a very high living cost, so the salaries will become higher. Some states have a lower living cost, so the salaries will become lower. So it's not that you can expect the same salary when you go to a state where the cost of living is low. So at the end, an average median is about 82 to 85,000 for a foreign trained. This will be different when you have a green card because when you are a foreign trained, the employer does have some expenses behind you for your work authorization, for your immigration, um, as well as when you come in, you're fresh. Uh, even though you worked in India, after your license, you're still considered as a fresh graduate or a fresher. So initially, that's something, you know, about 85,000 uh, is what you can expect as a starting salary range. But like I said, it, it differs from every state. If you're in California, I'd say don't start below 100,000 US dollars a year. Uh, but it depends again on the state. So you can look at the cost of living. How much do you save? Like I said, the salary will depend on the cost of living. So at the end, doesn't matter what state you are in, you'd probably end up saving the same amount as any other state. So what are the bright sides to the whole thing? You have a lot of job opportunities at this time. Uh, United States is facing a national physical therapy shortage. That means... Uh, there is a lot more requirement and they don't have enough physical therapists. So, you know, there are a lot of benefits. The salaries are higher. It gives you a good settlement. Uh, it's a great place to settle if you plan to. I still miss home. Uh, so my long-term plan would probably, you know, going back home. But the salary over here is great. So it depends, you know, everybody has their own personal opinions. But it's a great place to settle. All the facilities, everything is great. Uh, the average salary is pretty high. Like in India, if you save something, it takes a lot of time to build an amount. But over here, even if out of 100,000, let's say you save, you know, 15% of your salary. That's about 15,000. So you're just saving like 1,000 or $1,200 a month. When you convert that to Indian rupees, it's a lot more than you would probably make as a fresher in India. So the salary ranges are much higher. The lifestyle is different. Uh, like you call it, it's the Western culture, which is great. Uh, it gives you a lot of freedom. It gives you a lot of opportunities. What is the challenging side is that the evaluation process is very stringent and very time consuming. Uh, I myself have been through this and it does take a lot of time to get over it, but you just got to stay strong. The cost of expenses, because once you're working and earning in dollars, it's okay to spend in dollars. But when you convert Indian rupees to dollars, and you see, oh, the evaluation itself is like a $1,340. If you convert that, that's like $1 lakh and $10 just for one evaluation. To give an exam, again, about $600. So, which is about $50,000 approximately. So, the cost is initially high, but then once you start working, you definitely will be able to recover it. Uh, the NPT preparation, like I said, the exam is pretty standardized and it's not the easiest thing to do, but it's not like rocket science, which you can't do. Uh, we have been seeing a very positive growth in the pass rate for foreign trained. Uh, and I myself have, you know, helped and tutored a lot of students from Sancheti who've come here and I feel, uh, very blessed to be a part of Sancheti and to be able to you know, work with Sancheti students because our basics are so strong. Our work with that all our professors put in is so awesome that it's not as challenging as it would be for some other university. Uh, and I wouldn't say this if it was a different this thing, but definitely kudos and a big thank you to Sancheti for all their efforts because it's not just, you know, why they say, oh, Sancheti is one of the best programs in India. It definitely is because even when you come out to a global level of competition, you realize that you've been prepared well for, the, for it. 
so remember wherever there is a will there is a way there will be ups and downs in the journey but you definitely have to stay strong and me we we are always here to help you in the best way we can uh so as we are coming towards the end some of the questions you know about how the process works or how what i need to do is i've discussed about npt final frontier so that is a facebook page it's a private group but if you are a normal person you will be accepted so that's something that you can start following on facebook you can start tracking how the exam is because every day questions are posted as practice questions you can answer them as comments so that will kind of you know still get you going on knowing what kind of content is usually asked the other thing that i would strongly recommend is facts pt so facts pt is again started by dr bhupender singh and we all kind of do our little roles in there so facts pt is foreign academic credentialing tools and services so when you have questions on what i need to do with the evaluation process or i have this deficiency how can i you know cover that deficiency what is the next step i need to do or if i am at the start what is the next step i do or what is the first step i do all of that questions can be answered here uh, it is you know done by a lot of my colleagues so i know that it's appropriate information and it's much more prompt to get a response quicker similarly with fccpt rules changes and updates uh, very similar to facts pt but over here we discuss more of fccpt changes that's the evaluation like i said it's a very dynamic process it keeps changing very frequently um over here at the bottom i have put up my email so you can either take a picture or just reach out to me uh you can reach out to me me on email first and then you know we can share whatsapp numbers and i'll be more than happy to answer any question or you know facilitate in any of the process i can and always believe that that it's not late for you it doesn't matter what part of your career you are in you are always ready for this and even an expert was once a beginner so get started get ready and before i open up to any questions i know we are going to have some i would like to invite dr okli um i'm going to turn off the slide so you guys can see her um we just have thank you and questions but i would invite dr okli to kind of you know uh, share about the andrews university pt program and share a contact details so she is the professor she heads the tdpt uh, program and my opinion is uh, she knows that i respect and love her because they've been so friendly in helping me grow my career always been constant support even today it's been almost two and a half years that i graduated but we are in regular contact we keep updating we keep meeting and trying to enhance and improvise in our profession so over to you dr okli thank you dr shah and uh dr soroshi for letting me join this meeting um we are really uh thrilled to have had the opportunity to work with rahul in his studies and he's been um such a wonderful example of uh, the possibilities that can be achieved um, when you uh, put your mind to it when you study hard and uh, it's been exciting to to watch uh, his growth um, in the PT profession here in the United States so thank you appreciate the opportunity um, Andrews University as um, was mentioned is in Michigan uh, we offer a post-professional degree as was already explained um, we look at your education and then we try uh, our goal is to make your uh, when you graduate that your degree is equivalent to the entry level in the united states which is currently a doctorate in physical therapy um as Raul mentioned it is really important to do we require the educational credentialing review so that we can see if you have any deficiencies 
um, it is important that uh, for us, because our goal is to make sure that when you graduate, you have an equivalent degree, it's important for us to see what those deficiencies are. And we try uh, very hard to um, make sure that you've met uh, most of those more common deficiencies and to assist you at least to uh, direct you in a way that perhaps you can complete all of those. Um, one of the things that is unique about our program is that we do include two uh, clinical practical experiences. One is within our department, you'll be involved in the clinic. So that way you get a chance to experience uh, physical therapy practice in the United States. And then we also have an advanced clinical practicum. This one is done off campus uh, and it can be done anywhere in the United States. We have a, a clinical coordinator, Professor Scott, who will be working with you to assist you to uh, come up with a, a clinical practical um, in somewhere in, in the United States. And what is really thrilling is that we have several of our alumni who are currently um, clinical instructors for our students. So we really uh, appreciate that as well. And um, Dr. O, uh, Dr. Shaw's is one of those, should you decide to uh, travel his direction. So we are really excited about that. And I think it's been a real um, good thing for the students to be able to experience practice in the United States. Um, there are often times where job offers can occur on that last uh, practicum. So that's another exciting thing. Our program is 18 months and um, we have a very lovely, diverse and international community. We have a very large uh, presence uh, from our uh, international students and Indian community here. They will welcome you with open arms and make sure that uh, you feel at home. If you have any further questions, we have been working hard to set up um, Zoom meetings and we invite anybody who's interested to join those Zoom meetings, similar to this one here, only it's more specific to your, your potential experience at Andrews University. And if you'd like to be a part of that, I am happy to share our contact information. Is the chat working? Can I share that in the chat? Um, you will have to do it. Uh, the chat is not working. It's a live stream. So there are, you know, it's going okay. on through multiple different this thing. So you can share screen and just type it on the screen. So it goes on the recording. Okay. If you, I'll see if I can. Just do share screen and whiteboard. Yep. Okay. How about How's that? Can you see that slide? Yes. Okay. So that's our contact information. Uh, Michelle Keys is our advisor. She'd be happy to answer any of your questions, but um, she would also be uh, willing to let you know when our next Zoom session is. So if you have any further questions, that would be great. This is our website here, and you can certainly go on there to find more information that is specific to our post-professional program. Um, I, I don't know how much time this live stream is, so I won't sp spend any more time, but we welcome your questions and look forward to, to hearing from you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dr. Oakley. This was great to have you here and thank you for sharing the information. I'm pretty sure uh, even if I have someone who's interested, I will redirect them to contact you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, Okay. Dr. Sureshri, are you here? Was it a timed session? Um, I'm not sure. I think she should be back. She may have been out.
Okay. We can just wait for a couple of minutes to see if she can get back in. There she is. Uh, extremely <laughs> sorry. There was a technical issue. Am I audible and visible? Yes, you are. Yes. So uh, I think while I was almost on the verge of uh, facing the issue, I saw that uh, uh, Professor uh, Elizabeth, she shared her details and I'm sure our viewers must have seen that. So, uh, so shall we move on to a few questions? Or, of course, uh, yes. Okay, of great. So uh, one of the students uh, wants to know that the license is valid for lifetime or do we have to renew it from time to time? It's valid for lifetime. You just have to take the exam and pass it once. That's it. Okay. Okay. Great. Then uh, there is a student, MPT student, uh, who wants to know that is MPT from India of, uh, is valid in the U.S.? Or, or, and if not, what bridge courses would you recommend uh, the candidate should take? So you, so the NPT exam Master can only, only be taken in the United States. So you cannot take that from India. Uh, it's only administered in the United States and in Canada. Uh, for being able to do the program, like we discussed, there are multiple options. One is if you just decide to come here directly to work, you will have to go the H-1B option, but you require a lot of credits uh, and it requires a minimum of having a master's degree. If you want to do a bridge program, all the transitional, so United States has 250 plus universities that offer a DPT program, but that's a full length DPT, which is either three years or four years. Right. Transitional programs like Andrews or Loma Linda or Turo, they have shorter programs which are like bridge programs that bridge your Indian education and a DPT degree, which are short term programs compared to not having a full length of course. So those are the ones that you can look at. And like I said, there are master programs, but at a point of time, you're still going to have to do a DPT after that. So after someone has done master's in physiotherapy in India and goes to the US, uh, he or she has to complete the DPT program. You mean to say that? No. So if they have a master's and they become eligible at this point, it's fine. Okay. So if they have a master's and they complete the 210 credits, a okay. master's degree in India is still eligible, but you will still have to meet the 210 number of credits and specific content criteria that they have okay great and uh, so there's a student who wants to know that is uh, pr or citizenship required for the license exam no you can take it even on a visitor visa as far as you are eligible okay so along with this question uh, she has also asked that can a person on tourist visa give the license exam in the u.s so if you are eligible yes you can okay Okay, you can. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we have a lot of people who, you know, visit here, uh, who come on a tourist visa and can give the exam. The examination doesn't require any immigration status. But what's the point of having the license if you cannot work? To work, you will require an immigration status. To give the license, you do not require an immigration status. Okay, okay. great. And uh, lastly, um, the training, the coaching which you all are giving, which is which is amazing. I saw the entire presentation. So um, um, is it available like when a candidate is here doing, say, completing the internship? So can that person enroll for this coaching? Is there any online option or they have to? So the whole, co so the whole coaching is going to be completely online. We have students. At this point, I have students from 13 different countries, from the Middle East, India, Pakistan, Nepal, uh, mm -hmm. Only thing is that the classes will run on US time. So mm -hmm. you have to be getting up early morning to do the classes, but you can enroll in the course at any given point of time. And uh, it's available to everyone. The whole course program is online. Right. I think that bit, 
they they all can do because that is something i mean the efforts anyways in the end will pay off so i guess that should be fine time zones the difference in that yeah. uh, okay this i would like to extend heartfelt gratitude to you dr rahul for sharing your knowledge time expertise and also to professor elizabeth for waking up early t- today just to be with us on this platform and i think physio tv and ortho tv team feels uh, privileged that we had you as uh, our today's speaker and i'm sure this talk is definitely going to benefit so many of our uh, budding physios who aspire to go abroad get the license uh, you know crack the license so i'm sure that uh, they they i rather i would um, say that they must enroll for this coaching and they must seek guidance if they wish to get the license over there for practicing definitely thank you and uh, thank you so much for this opportunity uh, it makes me feel better it's morning but it brightened up my day even more to be able to you know do something for our esteemed institution and that's that's great so thank you so much to everyone who organized it especially you for coordinating and uh, helping with this thank you for all the viewers who watched uh, the slides if you require uh, i can request dr suroshri to you know put it I up will, somewhere where it can you know because it has all the information and it will also have my contact details so feel free to reach out to me on either instagram facebook whatsapp whatever is Possible. definitely and we really feel very proud uh, dr rahul when now we know that where 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 we like whatever you have achieved you have really done amazing and we all wish you good luck for much more laurels and uh, all the best and have a great day today thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank bye. you okay thank you bye bye professor bye thank you for the invitation pleasure is ours thank you